Greetings and welcome to Bubble Hearthing, I'm Bubble, and today we're going to be going over all of the black cards for the new Core Set M2021, or M21, Core Set 2021, M21, there we go, nailed it. So without further ado, let's just get right on into it. You see we have lovely Liliana back there, I, I, they got the same stuff except for a little little change there, a little, little shouldered. Unfortunately, they didn't have Aurobasco or Jenga Taxes as, as pins for this uh, Kickstarter thing, so what are you going to do? Moving on, because I want to try to get these things done faster, which I failed to on the previous two videos, but the third, third time's a charm, right? Out of six videos. Uh, I don't know, halfway there? Anywho, Alchemist Gift. One mana, instant speed. Jericho Creature gets plus one plus one, and gains your choice of death touch or life link down to turn. I don't know why they couldn't just make this give it a plus one plus one counter, and do this little thing for the turn, and, you know, because there's other synergies with that. Maybe that would just make it so overpowered. I don't think so, but anywho. It's a neat little combat trick, but you're not really, not often are you going to trade up with this, um, or rather I should say, not often is your creature going to survive that you throw into combat there. So if you have a bunch of little dudes that kind of stuck around, you didn't trade off early for whatever reason, speaking specifically in limited, because in standard this is tr this is trash, garbage, I was going to say, like, charbage, which is another, maybe it's both, who knows, but in limited, it's okay, like, you definitely still are going to two for one, um, not two for one. Yeah, two for one. You lose your creature and you lose us. Two for one. So if you can't trade up, then it feels really, really bad. Also keep in mind that there's a decent number of flyers in this set. So, you know, either put this on a flying dude and then you have to lose the flying dude or just try to find some way to deal with it. This is not your ideal removal. It's okay. I couldn't, you know, I wouldn't be upset having one of these in the deck, but for that reason, I'll give it a one out of five. It's really not all that exciting either. I think it could be like a little trap. For people and the lifelink who gets a lifelink in this lifelink maybe you have life gain synergies and then you're playing white Adam. anywho archfiend's vessel well, one minute one with lifelink oh maybe he cares about lifelink who knows all right when it enters the battlefield if it entered from your oh my eyebrow is being funny pardon me <laughs> when it enters the battlefield if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard exile it if you do create a five five black demon creature token with flying so one thing that you Actually, no, it wouldn't work with, um, <laughs> I thought about the, the white artifact idol thing that pulls things, but it pulls them from exile, not from the graveyard, so, eh, not so great there. So, obviously, you can escape it somehow. I believe there was, like, an easier way to activate, <clears throat> easier way to get this to go off fairly quickly. I'm not entirely certain. I'm not really huge on this card, anyway. The fact that it's a one mana, one one lifelink might, like, in black instead of white, might work somehow. Um, there is still, like, you know, there's still a few cards that, you know, here and there, kind of like a vampire theme where, you know, when you gain life, your opponent takes damage, and when your opponent takes you gain and whatever. So it can kind of work towards that, even though it's not a vampire. It is a cleric, but it does have some synergies that way. Uh, of course, you could use it with, um, like, Call of the Death Dweller, and suddenly it comes back up, and maybe you just don't put a counter on it. Maybe put your Death Touch and Menace on the other creature. Ideally, there were two. And then this one just becomes a 5-5. Five, five. That's an option. Um, obviously, you can use it with Luris as well. So there are ways that are already seeing play to bring this back. Um, it's not the best thing. Like, on its own, 1-mana, one 1-1 one, one lifelink, I don't really know any decks currently that want to play this. And if the life gain decks go towards Orzhov instead of just Mono White, which I think Mono White's going to be the best way to do that, then maybe this will see some play. Otherwise, mm, not crazy on it. So I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5 and construct it. I think people might try to play it, and if you can get the super early 5-5 five, five demon to go off, then that's awesome. In limited, where you are really going to have a hard time getting it to be a 5-5, five, five, I think it's like a 0 out of 5. I don't like it at all. The other, excuse me, the other lifelink things... They have more synergy with the fact they're life linking. This just happens to have it as a coincidence, like, by the way, whatever. Because I guess it's like, Ugh! and then you use my life to become demon. Okay. Anyway. Ah, oh, bad deal. Well, you already know what this is, and it, it kind of described itself. All right. I'm not really surprised they named this card this way they did. Anyway, uh, six mana. You draw two cards, and each opponent discards two cards. Each player loses two life. So it's like a sign in blood and then mind rot kind of stuck together. Uh, it is worth noting it says each opponent, so if you're playing with more than just, you know, more than one-on-one, -on -one, if you're playing multiple people in that sense, 
it does gain value there, but otherwise, it's just not a card. For six mana, we already have Thought Distortion, which doesn't draw you cards, but also doesn't lose you life, and can't be countered, and it's just largely seen as a better card compared to this thing. And even that's not really seeing too much play, it's more of a sideboard thing in Sultai, of all things. So, for that reason, um, this is going to be a 0 out of 5 both ways. You could think in limited, well the card draw is nice and the life loss is something, but then by the time you have 6 mana and you can play this, either it's not going to be your best play, or your opponent would have like other things in the board already and not have as many things in hand, so they maybe have to discard one thing, one or two. Um, if they're playing... Let's see, so if they're curving out, they probably have already played their land and are playing a creature or two each turn, in which case they might have one card left in their hand. If they're not curving out, or if they're kind of holding back, they're probably holding back on a few lands, which they can easily discard to this. I'm, I'm, I don't like this card. Blood Glutton, a 5 mana 4, 3 with live link. Very, very simple there. 0 out of 5 constructed, 1 out of 5 limited. You could, eh, you could say 2 out of 5, because it is a 4-3, if, even if it's only 3. It does activate that life gain, you know, gain 3 life for the turn um, trigger or whatever. It does fulfill that requirement. So because of that, it could actually work out there, um, only because it has that amount of power. But don't count on it really getting you very far. Don't think it's going to get you more than one activation, unless you, you know, protect it a lot with some sort of combat tricks or some, you know, other kill spells trying to keep this thing alive for a while. If you can, it gets a little more value, but I'm still going to say 1 out of 5. Alright, Caged Zombie. 3 mana, 2, 3. You can pay 2 and tap, but each opponent loses 2 life. Activate this ability only if a creature died this turn. Not going to see any play in standard. There are already a few. That's like one Vampire Neonate or whatever. There's a couple cards that can basically do this that, doesn't, that don't require mana to activate their ability and don't have like an activation cost or a requirement you have to fulfill either. So this is just a worse version of those. Six consecutive life sentences. Oh, huh, interesting. Um, that's kind of funny. Beyond that, in limited, it's like a two out of three just because a two out of three is a three mana two three with something you can do. Pardon me. Um, the fact that it can do it if anything died, not just one of your creatures died, is nice. I wouldn't count on using this ability more than maybe two times because like if you do that you either have to have your opponent attack into something and not do so well or you jump block and then you ping some damage. Two is an amount of life that will eventually catch up to you. If you ever had a couple cat ovens dealing some damage on the other side of the board and you know it, it catches up but you don't gain any life either so hopefully you have another plan. This is not a win con. Carrion Grub anyone's ever played Hearthstone, there's a card with the same name in there, although that's a 2-5, this is a 0-5. 4 mana, uh, 0-5. Carrion Grub gets plus X plus 0, where X is the greatest power among cards in your creature cards in your graveyard. And when it enters the battlefield, you mill 4 cards. Again, the best thing I like, um, the best thing about this card is that it has established mill as a keyword. It's okay. I mean, sure, in theory, you can go ahead and mill, like, the Carnivorous Great Worm or whatever, Impervious Great Worm, the big old like, I don't think it's 1616, but if it is, it's up there. Like, it, just for the, just for argument's sake, like, let's say it's like 1313, I don't know if it is, but it's a huge thing that really sees no play. So, yeah, it can be a 13-5 on turn 4, which is very, very good, but it doesn't have trample. So the stats are just kind of there. I mean, we already had the freaking giant dinosaur that cost 5 green, that was a 10-10. And that saw about zero play because it's a vanilla 10-10. And you needed to basically just be mono green. Like, it cost 5 green. If you're not playing mono green, then you're not, <laughs> and it's not gonna, you're not gonna cast it. I'm just, just saying. Okay, unless you're like splashing a little bit, but you still have all lands that can produce green mana. Hmm. Anywho, um, as far as the mill aspect goes, it's too expensive for the mill that it gives you, and as far as the power, you can't really reliably say you're going to get a big creature in the graveyard, especially because if you have these, you're running creatures with zero power. I know it doesn't, like, you know, make it, it, it dilutes the pool, basically, because sure, it only takes the biggest power among the creatures, 
but having these means you're missing out you could be missing out on you know bigger hits so you could try to do this in like some kind of weird reanimator then you reanimate the big thing then it makes this thing weaker and i don't like it i don't like it zero to five both ways goodbye crypt lurker four minute three four when it enters the battlefield you may sacrifice a creature or discard a creature card if you do draw a card not bad uh in constructed it's it's bad though so you know no playing constructed but in limited the fact that you can just kind of recycle your weaker dudes like maybe the game has gone past a state where you don't really want your little you know one mana one one life linker anymore maybe it's a little too late then it has that bonus that you can just kind of throw it away of course you would have had to hold on to that card oh there's on the board and it's just doing nothing and then you didn't chump block it away for whatever reason or it's in your hand and you hold on to it because you just never found a reasonable outlet to just drop it for the hell of it. Or maybe holding on to it to, like, to kind of confuse your opponent. Like, hmm, I have something. And then maybe they got to play play around your removal that you don't have. So in those cases, if you're going to plan on holding back a few things, then sure, give it a shot. It's not a bad card. It's not really bad for what it does. Keep in mind, it only does it once, though. It doesn't do it on attack or you can't do it whenever you want to. It's when you play this card, you get one chance to do it. Hmm, sorry. I'm, you know, I woke up a little while ago and I'm still waking up apparently. <laughs> Part of me is awake, um, but the rest of me is still off in dreamland or something. Anywho, um, and in this case I'm probably having nightmares. But, anywho, this card is going to be a 2 out of 5 in limited. I could see playing one or two of these things. The fact that it's some May sacrifice is nice. But then you got a vanilla 3 4 for 4, which feels pretty bad. Alrighty, Death Bloom Thalid. Oh, just keeping this guy around. Cool. Well, nothing wrong with that. I like the artwork. I think it's pretty sweet. I like the idea when you, you know, when it dies, it makes a 1 1, then you can use it for sacrifice fodder, or you can just use it to block more often. In limited, this is like a 3 out of 5. It's, it's a pretty solid card. Nothing wrong with that. You're not upset to pick up 1 or 2, just to help, you know, stabilize your board, keep it solid there. If you have any plus 1 plus 1 counter stuff, that's decent because you're almost guaranteed to have a creature left over at the end of, at the, end of the turn. Um, similar if you have any sacrifice things, it kind of works there. Standard, it's a 0 to 5 because we already have it and it doesn't do anything, so why would it do anything now? Okay, Demonic Embrace. Ah, oh, this is an interesting one. Certainly an interesting one. So a 3 mana aura. An enchantment aura, right? Cool. Enchanted creature gets plus 3 plus 1, has flying, and is a demon in addition to its other types. And you may cast Demonic Embrace from your graveyard by paying 3 life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other mana costs. So, not it's not free at all. You still have to pay the three mana, and then pay three life, and then discard a card. Which is a lot to pay. But giving something plus three plus one regularly, just recurring, like obviously the one creature is probably going to be dead. But okay, sure. So, you put it on your big dude, or whatever dude. Little dude, big dude, whatever. Um, in limited, let me just say this card is insane. And basically, it's like a four to five. Maybe even five out of five limited. It's bonkers the fact that you can just re repeatedly get this buff on something and it gives it evasion as flying the fact that it makes it a demon is actually a little bad because then bane slayer tanks it but bane slayer is a mythic and i don't really think you're gonna be playing around a mythic too often you know <laughs> i'm not always playing the game worrying like well if they have to ferry though then i'm dead i'm like well odds are they don't have to ferry they're not even playing blue what the hell am i talking about so going forward with that in standard this could see play and not just in decks that like to run auras, it's gonna be more of like a mid rangey sort of thing. Is all right. The question you have to ask yourself is: Is the card you're discarding worth less than this card? Is this better than whatever you're throwing away? Hopefully, you're not throwing away a creature because if you're replaying this thing, you lost a creature, and in that case, or maybe they bounced it, whatever. But you know, essentially, you lost a creature. And in that case, you're losing another creature to potentially throw this onto. You would rather maybe discard another Demonic Embrace. I don't know, but wouldn't you just rather play the Demonic Embrace and not have to pay the three life and discard a card? Yeah, that's silly. Okay, unless there's some reason you want to lose three life. Um, but yeah, I think this card's actually quite good. I'm going to put it at a three out of five in Constructed. I feel like just the repeated threat of this thing coming back over and over again, and the plus three, plus one, and flying. If it didn't give flying, I'd be like, whatever, it's, it's, it's trash, fine. The fact that it gives flying, which means it can get over a few things, and swing in, hit planeswalkers, hit, you know, your face, whatever, is awesome. So for that reason, three out of five constructed.
Come on. There we go. I pushed the right button. Duress. Just evergreen, solid card. We see it every set, pretty much. Nice one to have. It keeps uh, certain like combos and such in check. Um, certain deck types. If you don't have access to this card in a format, then the format is largely going to roll you over. Um, it's going to be very, very one-sided with whatever deck it is that wants to just hold on to cards, I guess. Um, I guess just combo cards. Combo decks. Yeah. So this just keeps combo decks in check, as far as I'm aware. Solid card. Um, in limited, you can pick up one of these, but I wouldn't really pick up more than one. And for that reason, I'm going to say one out of five. In Constructed, it sees some sideboard play. Agonizing Remorse outclasses it by a mile right now, so not as much. But it's just good to keep this in the standard rotation. So, I don't know, like 3 out of 5, it's a, it's a good card. Eliminate, ah, whereas Agonizing Remorse is like a 4, like a 5 out of 5 kind of thing. Alright, uh, 2 mana, instant speed, destroy target creature or planeswalker with commanded mana cost 3 or less. Why, I don't know why this isn't a sorcery, because you're going to be killing Teferi with this thing and... <laughs> Anywho, um, you know, a little Teferi, a little, a little Teferi. So let's see here. Um, well, in Limited, this is this is a solid ability. I'm going to say it's probably like around a 2.5 out of 5. It's not your premier removal or anything like that. And Planeswalkers, you're not going to have too many Planeswalkers to worry about in Limited. Hopefully not. If everyone like was crazy and everyone opened a Planeswalker and you got like, <laughs> and you got kind of crapped on, with your pulls, then uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, it wasn't. It's not your day, All right? But otherwise, uh, yeah, not really. There was another one like gruesome demise or something. I forgot exactly what it was. In a previous set, they did a similar thing. It killed things with a lower CMCs, maybe just lower power and toughness, which was nice. But it wasn't exactly, you know, premier removal. Like I said, in limited, yeah, like I said, like two point five out of five. In standard, I think we just have better options on two mana that kill things. That just straight out like kill whatever the hell it is, or kill more things. So for that reason, I can just not cast down, but we have things that are similar to cast down, right? Uh, we have not go for the throat, but um, you know the the one where you can either kill a creature without counters or kill the one with count or remove counters from a creature. I forget what it's called. I always call it go for the throat, but it's not it. Um. Hmm. Anywho, we have that one, we have a new thing, I think we have like Grass of Darkness as well, so this card's not really too great in standard. I'm gonna say like 1 out of 5 there, maybe it sees some play, but I don't really see why it should. 0 out of 5 in standard, there we go, solid, okay. Uh, Fetid M, 2 mana, 1, 2 flyer, and you can pay 1 to give a death touch on a turn. It's alright, standard is not playable at all. In limited, you could, 2 out of 5, it's basically like a bear, kind of, you can put 1 mana into it and suddenly trade for something. It's cool. It's nice. It's not great. Finishing blow. Five mana. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Instant speed once again. So in standard again, zero out of five. It's not it's not worth it. We have murderous rider. And yeah, you have to pay two life, but it only costs three. And then you get a creature afterwards if you want to. That can gain you back the life. Cool. And then it can also go back into your deck and things, and it's is neat that way. So uh there's that. In limited, like a 2 out of 5, the fact that it can like, target whatever, basically whatever, is nice. Although it's expensive. And that's it. It's still okay. It's not, like there's, the standard for removal in limited that is largely unconditional is 5 mana. So, there you go. Uh, it's like a standard kind of card. 2.5 out of 5 maybe, um, for finishing blow again. Moving on to Gloom Sower, a 7 mana, 8-6. So right, right in between there, you got 8-6, 7 mana, right? When Gloom Sower becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller loses two life and you gain two life. So, at the very least, you play it, it dies to your removal, you'll feel bad. No, but, um, usually, you play it, you attack with it, your opponent's probably gonna block, and they still take some damage. This is actually a pretty solid card. I'm gonna say, like, 3.5 out of 5, not quite 4 out of 5. This can win the game for you, but the 6 toughness is going to be... More easily blocked, of course. I prefer like seven for some reason is like a really nice number because you have a lot of things that are like three power or like two and three. Whereas, like, you know, this will obviously trade, like, you know, it'll probably get like two for one right there. But if you if you kill your opponent's two medium creatures and they still have a big guy, ugh, and if this thing isn't attacking, what's it really doing for you? So that's why it's like a 3.5 out of five. It can get the game finished. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, 
given a good amount of board states, this thing will just put an immediate clock on everything, and your opponent will either scoop or have to answer it within like one or two turns. Otherwise, they're done. Until then, they chuck things away at it, you know, chump blocking, and they still take two life each two damage each time. The fact that it gains you two life is nice as well, because it means you can be a little more aggressive and still pad your life total and not really worry about blocking with this thing so much. So it's it's pretty good. But again, three point five out of five. Standard, you're not going to see this play at all, but it's kind of that's kind of cool. All right, Gormand. Ah, uh, yeah, look at this thing. I really like the artwork for this thing. Who who did this? Igor. Appropriate. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, six mana, five five flyer. Additional cost to cast this spell is sack a creature. It also has flying, which is cool. So six mana, five five flyer, uh, flample as we call it. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So the reason that this doesn't say each player sacrifices a creature, um, is because they want to attach the sacrifice to the cost so that you always sack a creature, whether or not this thing gets countered. So, odds are this is not going to get countered in. Also, well, what does it means that you can't just play it on an empty board, and if you don't have any creatures, you can't play this card. Basically, you need to have something out there first. Otherwise, it can't sacrifice itself and just have it, you know, be expensive removal essentially. So, an expensive edict. So for that reason, I'm gonna say this is like a three out of five because it needs to have a creature on the board, on your side of the board. You need to lose the creature, which kind of sucks. And then it's pretty good, but even then it's a 5-5. Five, five. Sure, you put a decent clock out there. I would rather have this guy. So that's why this is a 3.5, this is only a 3. And in standard, it's a 0. Grasp of Darkness. Oh, I love this card so much. I remember when this thing first came... I think I remember when it first came out. I don't know. I do believe I was there when it was first printed. Um, which isn't... It was a few years ago, whatever. Um, really, really nice card. Just two black. Target creature gets minus 4, minus 4 until under turn. So this gets around any sort of indestructible stuff. Fantastic. Um, it doesn't get around hexproof, obviously, or protection because it means you can't be targeted by such and such. So you know, it is not damage though. It does not damage the creature. It just lowers the stats. And then when your toughness goes to zero, it gets it dies as a state-based action. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, premier, premium, wonderful stuff. This is going to definitely see play. Um, in standard, I'm just going to go ahead and say 4 out of 5 there. It doesn't necessarily take the place of other removal because they're... Like, this is great against aggro and even like some mid-range things, but unfortunately against the later game, you know, Euros and Krasis and bigger sharky things, it doesn't really do a whole lot. You could still probably trade up into it, which is fairly nice. Imagine their Euro is a 2-2. Keep in mind, it's not going to be a 6-2. It doesn't just do damage to their toughness. It also lowers their power. For the turn so you can very easily have something like you know your own 2-2 or a 3-3 whatever block and suddenly now you're kind of ahead in a sense in limited uh i'm just gonna put this five out of five this card's super amazing it does require you to go somewhat heavily into black as you know the mana cost is very specific but damn this card's a house this card is amazing and i would be tempted to first pick this if you know, if my other card was some trash rare, then yeah, absolutely. Alrighty. If my other card was a temple, yeah. Alright, uh, Grim Tutor. Here's a mythic that I might also pick this card above, just saying. Uh, three mana, search your library for a card, put that card into your hand, shelf your library, you'll lose three life. So, it's a nice card, and from what I've heard, because I don't know too much about the older formats, I've heard this is a very appreciated reprint. Much like another card we're going to see um, in green. But aside from that, the reason why, like in limited, you can, if you have a bomb card, if you have like one or two huge creatures, if you have five huge creatures that you're trying to get to, it's a lot of big guys, and I wouldn't worry about it. I think you can more reliably just draw them instead of having like a sixth one. Also, if you have like big guys and removal, and you just got to use this as your, your toolbox card, sure, give it a shot, I guess. Is not bad, but in constructed, the reason why this isn't really as exciting as I want it to be is because we already have Wish Claw Talisman, and we have Teferi, which combos well with it because you just you do that. Okay, you bounce it back to your hand. Your opponent doesn't get it, and you do whatever. And Wish Claw saw a minimal amount of play when it first came out because of that Teferi combo. 
and also because you could use it with Doom Foretold and your opponent would have to sacrifice it. Or you could line it up to your opponent and sacrifice that, you know? But because that is seeing zero play, and other tutors are also seeing zero play, Ignite the Beacon? Am I right? No, that's a horrible card. Um, Idyllic Tutor, though, when, uh, when Theros Beyond Death came out and there were enchantments for everybody, and that could search any enchantment for three mana, and it saw zero play. It's the same kind of thing. Um, I don't feel like this is going to see any play at all, really. So unfortunately, it's a nice reprint. I'll give it a 1 out of 5, because maybe someone sees it and loves it and makes it work. But otherwise, I don't know. If you see it, see play. It's going to be in a deck that only has like one or two really crucial combo pieces. And then you're going to see like four of these things. That's, that's my idea. All right. Hooded Blightfang, a 3 mana 1 4. I really like the artwork, how it's like kind of curry and spiny, whatever. I don't know, I, I like that little style. Um, good job, can't read your name, but well done. You? Okay. Uh, 1 4 Death Touch. Whenever a creature you control with Death Touch attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So, a little kind of Scorch Pitter thing there, although it triggers for any of the Death Touch creatures. You can't really reliably have that many things in Limited, and so that first ability is largely just like Scorch Pitter basically. And for the second, not for the second, for Constructed, it doesn't, I know there's another ability, just, yeah. For the second part of it, um, for Constructed rather, for the first part, <laughs> can't talk. Technically it's the second part, because Death Touch is the first, right? Anyway, so... I believe that this card is not, it's not Scorch Pitter, it's not Cavalcade um, of Calamity or whatever the hell it is. Um, so it's interesting, you don't really see Death Touch Tribal. I mean, you can use it on your Mire Triton and suddenly it's a little better there, but Death Touchers are usually used as blockers to trade up, not really as aggressive things to try to get that little bit of damage through because if you block it, then your creature's gonna die, so you may as well just take it, right? Hmm, that's weird. The second part of it is whenever you can, whenever a creature you control a death touch deal damage to a planeswalker, destroy the planeswalker, which just sounds fine, largely, but we've seen these abilities before um, on other little things. Notably, War of the Spark of Raska made a token that had that sort of ability, I believe. And aside from the fact that she was just bad, although her artwork is on point, I don't know. I think it actually looks like super elegant and everything. It's like a fungal kind of dress and whatnot. I don't know. Aside from that, though, um, it's just a little kind of throwaway thing they tacked on there to make it rare, I guess. It's not really anything worth writing home about. In standard 0 to 5, it's it's a 1-4 death touch that doesn't really do a whole lot for you. And in limited, I can reasonably say uh, 2.5 out of 5. 3 mana, 1-4. The fact that it has 4 toughness. For death touch, it doesn't really matter how much power you have, as long as you have something. I haven't seen anything that has 0 power with death touch, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Um... But as long as you're doing one point of damage and you can survive the combat, then you win, right? So that's why looking at the ha looking at this thing having four power, uh, rather having four toughness at three mana is good. So two point five out of five there. Infernal scarring, a two mana aura, enchanted creature gets plus two plus zero and has when this creature dies draw a card. So this is like fringe playable. In standard is zero, but it's almost there. I think this is at the very cusp, at the, at the edge of being able to see actual competitive play. But no. In Limited, it does help the fact that, you know, if it dies, you don't two for one yourself, but you unfortunately still lose the creature and lose the thing, and if you, and then you draw a land, and then you feel sad. But it's, it's a pretty good card. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and say... A 3 out of 5. I like it. You know, I really don't hate this card at all. Just keep in mind, do you want to put this on a creature that is probably going to die? Or do you want to put this on your big guy and make it so, you know, it's harder for your opponent to come back? Things you gotta consider. Is it better played early or late? I would say I would rather play it early, because your late game creatures are fairly expensive, and odds are at that point in time you can't say that you're reliably going to either draw it or play it, because you probably don't have that much mana. So... Like, if you open, like, four lands, that's still a far cry from seven lands, you know? So, that being said, I would pretty much play this on curve when you can. Like, not necessarily on turn two, but, like, play it on whatever creature you can and just 
start swinging. Eventually, your opponent's gonna have to block, and then you get a card. Cool. All right. Ah, uh, Karavek? Karavek? I'm gonna say Karavek the Spiteful. I'm gonna call him Spiteful, dude. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, four mana, three, two, legendary. Other creatures get minus one, minus one. All of the creatures. Yours, your opponents, the guys over there at the other table. Yep, he's got hit too. You actually have to announce to the whole room when you're playing it. Luckily, with how quarantine's going on, maybe you're not really going outside too much, so you just be handled digitally. Um, but yeah, otherwise you have to have to shout, Caravac resolved! And then like, okay, everyone, all your X1s go away. Sad face. Anywho, um, all jokes aside, though, this is not... Like, in Constructed, people, oh my god, they can't play Cataven now, because the cats are all going to die immediately. Y yeah. Yeah, but... There are other, and arguably better answers, to Cataven. Also, you can only play one of these. Um, not only would two of them... Like, I'm, they wouldn't kill each other, but... Um, they're legendary rules, so it doesn't really work that way. I guess you could spark double it, and have everything get minus... Two, minus two, except these guys only get minus one, minus one. And that largely could help your board state. And this also could be a decent way to get a, um, get through Mono White. However, if Mono White aggro, as I kind of see it going forward, is going to be focused around getting plus one, plus one counters, you got to hit this on time. Otherwise, Venerated Luxon or whatever, Bastery's plus one, plus one Armada is just going to make this thing useless. So that kind of sucks. It's worth noting, though, it does lower their power, too. So if they have, like, four creatures out there, we're going to assume one of them dies and the other three get lowered, so you probably get rid of either four or five power on the board, which is kind of nice. But in limited, I don't think you can reliably work this guy into your deck and not hit yourself a significant amount as well. So in limited, I'm going to say three out of five, despite what I just said. Like, it's not a super blowout card, but it is a really nice card. You know, No, 2.5 out of five, because... At some point, you're going to want this guy to die just to help your guys get through. Um, in Constructed, a, like a 1? For what it does, there are other cards that do it better. Even just playing like Cry of the Carnarium or Flame Sweep or whatever is largely seen as a better thing to play in this guy. Um, but I could see a deck where you don't really run that many creatures and you just play this guy as as an aura, essentially. And maybe you get to swing in there once or twice, or maybe it blocks and you you know prevent more damage. Two out of five constructed. Three out of five limited. All right, kite sail freebooter. Uh, that's another awesome thing, kind of like a duress. Is duress with wings essentially. Two mana, one two flyer. Enter the battlefield. You look at your opponent's hand and you pick a non-creature on the end from it. But when kite sail freebooter leaves, they get the card back. So that's just kind of cool. Uh, that's a solid card. I think it's always good to add these sort of effects to keep other decks in check. For that reason, uh, Constructed, I can see the same play, absolutely. Largely more of a sideboard card, but still, I'm going to say, um, hell, 4 out of 5 there. It's just it's a solid ability. The fact that it goes on a creature as well is awesome. I mean, it can even be a little more aggressive if you want to. So, yeah, 100%. Going to see some play. I would say 5 out of 5 if it was, like, 100% um, going to be main decked, but because it's not necessarily a main deck card, it might be more of a side deck card, I'm going to say 4 out of 5. In Limited, this is also a really, really good card. I, I'm going to, like... I don't know. Five out of five limited. The fact that it's duress with the body is super good. Yeah, it can die. Just try to hope, like, you know, try to plan around this thing dying and your opponent and, and you being in a better spot to deal with whatever threat you removed earlier on. This is a great card. I love the design and everything. I think it's fantastic. Liliana's Devotee. Like, look what I've done for you, Liliana. I've raised half a zombie. I mean, I'm assuming that his face... Actually, you can barely see over the ridge of the nose. There might be another eye there. But it looks like his face is just cut right in half. And I was like, well, I got one half. The other half's over there. And we can put them together and be as one. And she's like, oh, no. Get, uh, uh, well, get out of here. Anywho. Three mana, two, three. Zombies you can roll get plus one, plus zero. Not horribly relevant. I mean, it, there were some zombies in Nor the Spark. Not really much going on right now with that. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay two if you do make a zombie. So, sure, there's that. Um, you're not going to combo this with Timeric Calls to Dead or anything like that. It doesn't even give you a whole lot of black devotion if you're trying to do that. Pardon me there. So I'm going to say, construct a 0 to 5. The fact that you have to hold on to mana... I mean, it's not too bad, because you're playing this in a limited sense. 
you can just go into combat and do whatever things probably get an idea for if things are going to die or probably know if things died and then you can hold on to the two mana or if nothing really died or you have a better play just upright just don't worry about it um i kind of like this in fact so in that sense i'm going to put it at like a 2.5 out of 5 it's better than your average bear Alrighty, Liliana's standard bearer. Oh look, Liliana's getting some some attention in this set. Alright, three mana, three one, flash. How does it compare to Bladlands Paragon? Let's see. When this card enters the battlefield, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. So Maybe Blacklands Paragon isn't the correct um comparison. Maybe you want to think more along the lines of a Midnight Reaper. So whereas Midnight Reaper stays on the board. And it has one more toughness, which doesn't usually matter, but sometimes it does. Um, and pings you every now and then, whenever a creature dies. This thing just says, count the number of times a creature died. Um, under your control, only your stuff. And you can just flash in at the end. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can also use it as a combat, not combat trick, but you know, surprise blocker. Ooh! And then, of course, it's not great, because unless creatures died pre-combat, it's not going to draw any cards. But 3 mana, 3 one flash isn't terrible. 2 mana 3 1 flash is kind of more so along the lines of playable, but the fact that it can draw you cards as well, I'm gonna say in standard people are gonna try running this instead of Midnight Reaper, which sees like one or two spots in a few sacrifice decks. So for that reason, I'll go ahead and give it something like a 2 out of 5 in standard, which is pretty decent. In I'll give it 3 out of 5 standard. You know what? I think you can actually see something. In limited, however, uh, this card is pretty nice. I'm gonna say like a 3.5, even like a 4 to 5. No, 3.5 out of 5. You need other threats as well. You need to back this up somehow, and you're probably not gonna be able to draw like one card. But if you use it largely post combat when a whole lot of things traded, and like, well, now what? Now I draw two cards, and I have a 3 1. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. And once it's on the board, it's there, and then you just have a vanilla 3 1. So, meh. Liliana's steward. Oh, look at this. Oh, lo lo lovely. Lovely guy here. Oh, lurch, please. Lurch. <laughs> anyway, um, one mana, one, two. Okay. You can tap and sack it, which doesn't really matter if you tap it, I guess, but yeah, you can sack it. Target opponent to charge a card. And you can only do this at sorcery speed. It's, it's a silly little thing. It's a zombie. If you happen to have the zombie synergy, Sure, I don't really see that being worth it, but keep in mind these last three cards, well, these last two cards are real zombies, so eh, maybe that gives more credit to the uh, the devotee or whatever. Um, it's a neat little effect here. I could see you taking this as like, you know, one of your last few cards, playing like one of these, maybe two of these in your deck, and just be like, oh, at the end of the day, you only have one card? Okay, discard. You know, or if your opponent just gives something away, like it draws like, oh, thank goodness I drew this card, sac. I mean, it would have to be doing your turn. They would have had to, like, you know, opt or do some instant speed card draw. And then you tap and make them do this. But it's not terrible. Honestly, it's not too bad. Just the fact of having a 1-mana one 1-2 one is, like, okay. And if you have a good amount of enchantments or combat tricks or buffs, then I could see that actually paying off. Standard is a 0 out of 5. And limited, is it, is it 2 out of 5? It's solid 2. Ah, uh, there she is. The lovely lady herself, Liliana. All right, so for four mana, you get a four loyalty planeswalker. Okay, okay. Plus one, each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three life. So kind of like a Croxa ability there. Also similar to the is it Liliana of the Veil, I believe it is. The three mana Liliana that has the same effect for a plus ability, except they don't have the life loss tacked onto it. So solid ability there. Of course, being four mana instead of three mana is a huge difference. Um... It is much, much slower, but it's not bad. Not bad. Right, minus three, target creature gets minus X, minus X, until the turn where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. Not just creature cards, it's just the number of cards. So that's pretty good. You will want to have a decent number of things in your graveyard already. I can imagine... Like, see, the fact that it isn't only creatures means you can just throw away, like, instant sorceries and stuff. So if you already use some removal, it just makes that ability stronger. If you used other... If you're playing Demir and use some card draw or something, if you use Opt, if you're playing Sultai and you happen to use some Growth Spirals or there's Euro in the graveyard, it doesn't exile anything, so that just makes it a little more powerful. I like it, I like what I'm seeing. Minus seven, you get an emblem with at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put target creature card from your graveyard into the battlefield under your control against haste. 
gains haste. Keep in mind, like I just said with Euro, um, he wouldn't work because he would come into the battlefield and then he would sacrifice himself because he wasn't um, escaped. And you still get the little end of the battlefield thing, but it's kind of, is it really worth it? Um, but yeah, that's a solid ability though, absolutely. The fact that when the creatures put into the battlefield through the emblem die, they do not get exiled means comes in, gains haste, you can attack. Oh, it died? Cool. It's back. Just bring it back next turn, or bring back a bigger guy if you want to. Um, I really, really like this card, actually. I think this card's fantastic. Oh my goodness. I didn't think I would like this card so much. Wow. Okay, you know what? Do you know what? Now, unfortunately, Croxa doesn't really see... It barely sees any play. You might see, like, one or two of these things in, like, a Rakdos sack deck, just because you can sack it to the oven before it gets sacrificed itself, and you get two foods. Woo! Um... You get value, but otherwise, Crocs doesn't really see much play. Despite that, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm, I'm feeling it right here. And usually when I'm feeling it, it's like some sort of indigestion, but I haven't eaten yet, so I know that's not what it is. Five out of five standard. Five out of five limited. This card is insane. I love it. There we go. I think this is a huge, crazy good card, and I'm going to do what I can. I am part of the Early Access Streamer event, love that, so I can play around with these cards and not worry about wild cards, woohoo! So I'm definitely going to try to make the most of this one if I can. I don't definitely know how, but I'm going to. I feel it. I feel it in my bones, which is appropriate, because Liliana, she's probably familiar with bones quite a bit. Okay, was that a double entendre? No, although this is the bone here, so, I mean, it's bone. Anywho, uh, Malefic Scythe. How do I pronounce that card? Scythe? Yeah, sure, that's it. Uh, I like that the bait, the, wow, I can't talk. I can't even say blade. I like that the blade is black. Okay. The rain on Spain falls mainly on the plain. Okay, so anyway. Uh, two mana artifact and equipment artifact. Enters the battlefield with a soul counter on it. It already, oh, hello. There's my soul counter right now. Anyway. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each soul counter on the scythe. And when this creature dies, you add a soul counter. Of course you can proliferate, but, ha, <laughs> proliferate, like that's a mechanic. So... The fact that it has equipped for one is nice, not gonna lie. Like, the fact that it just pay one, get something plus one plus one at the very beginning is cool. I don't see why it couldn't enter the battlefield and already equipped to a creature, honestly. I think that would have been fine. But it just keeps getting better as things are like, Yeah, in limited, I'm gonna say like three out of five. This is a solid thing. You're gonna have a case where your opponent pays one to give something like plus four plus four on each creature they have, and you know, obviously it scales up well. Yeah, this is a really, really nice card. In standard, I think that... Mardu Knights already kind of do their own thing here. There was a brief appearance of Steel Claw Lance when Throne of Eldraine first came out, and then that card didn't see any play at all. So this is kind of like a similar idea to that. So for that reason, I'm going to say 0 to 5 in standard. But in limited, like, yeah, 3 out of 5. I think maybe even 4 out of 5. Like, this is a really, really solid card. All right, Masked Blackguard. A 2 mana, 2 1 with flash. Okay, sure. You can pay three, it gets plus one plus one to limit a turn. Not the best sort of fire breathing, but I guess it's black, so what do you do? You're just breathing the ashes of your fallen enemies? No, it's still kind of a red thing. I don't know. You're you're, you're vaping, whatever. So, let's see here. It's, it's okay. It's not great, obviously. You're probably just going to play this. If you happen to have five mana, you'll play it, you'll pump it, you'll still lose, but you trade up into a three toughness instead of a two toughness creature. Eh, not a fan. The fact that it's a rogue, maybe it matters because you can play it alongside of the um, Robber of the Rich and get the trigger again. Uh, no, no, no. So for that reason, a 0 out of 5 both ways. I mean, 1 out of 5 limited, sure. It is a mana sink, um, but in standard 0 out of 5. Massacre Worm. Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. I remember when this guy first came out. I forget what set it was. Like, was it like Phyrexia? I don't think it was Phyrexia. Or like Meriden? I don't know. But I know this thing is a freaking beast. Um, For the record, in limited 5 out of 5. 6 out of 5, it's right on the card, come on. No, so for 6 mana, when enter the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. Only your opponent's, and it's until end of turn, meaning I'm pretty sure like if they have, like say they have a Death Bloom Thalid, whatever, and it dies and makes a token, I'm pretty sure it's still under that minus two, minus two, like, aura for the turn, basically. So, that dies as well. That's my understanding. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, 
Yeah, okay. Um, that player loses two life. I had a second, I was like, hold on, creatures controls dies? Is that how you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's too many S's in that word. Sentence, word, whatever. So this card is fan freaking tastic. If you do not win the turn you play this or the turn after you play this card, then I'm sorry, you probably lost a long ago. But this is an amazing thing here. I don't know this is going to see any standard play because big. Because <laughs> big black things don't really get much play in standard. However, um, this. It's not really an answer to aggro either for six mana. I guess you could try to play this alongside other blanket removals. Removals. Like if you're playing Orzhov, maybe you could use this like, um, you know, Shadow of the Sky, and you can use this with Cry of the Carnarium. You can combo the two of them together. It's cool. I want this to see play. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 in standard because I really want it to see any play. But I don't know if it will. I think the format's just a little too... I think the creatures in the format are a little too big for this thing to actually get there. Unfortunately. Like, 6 mana is a little too late to play against aggro. And the minus 2 minus 2 is not enough to really make an impact against the control decks that have a few creatures here and there. And mid-range, sure, maybe this blows out mid-range, I guess. Okay, uh, Mind Drop, usual reprint you see all the time. Uh, limited 1 out of 5, standard 0 out of 5. It's just cool to just see it around. It's just a standard card to keep in the uh, rotation. Alright, Necromentia. This is like the new Unmortigo. Go. Cool. For 3 mana. Although you can play this in mono black, notably. Um, or just, you could play it without playing blue, I should say. Whatever. Choose a card name, other than a basic land card name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with that name and exile them. So, same kind of thing as on Ward Ego. Although, notably, with Ego, you could actually name a basic land, but that had a limit of getting at, at the most four copies of thing. So, you couldn't just call, like, if you're playing against Mono Ridge, you couldn't just call mountains. Like, <laughs> all your mountains are gone now. Good luck with the two you have on the board. But anyway. And then they would still kill you because they're Mono Red and they already had, like, three or four creatures on the board somehow. Uh, let's see. And then they get four creatures out and they flash an Embercleave anyway, huh? That player shuffles their library, then creates a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token for each card exiles from their hand this way. So as opposed to Unmort Ego, where any card you hit from their hand, for each card you hit from their hand, they would draw a card. This is instead putting 2-2 two -two zombies on the board, which I believe in decks that would run this card is preferable because you probably have plenty of blanket removal, plenty of things you can use to kill multiple creatures, and multiple creatures at a time. Or just like some solid blockers, some solid defensive options. And them getting creatures on the board, weak little guys, well, weak little creatures, as opposed to drawing cards, is a huge upside. So for that reason, in standard, I think this is definitely gonna see some play. I'm gonna put this five out of five standard. I mean, whereas Caravac, whatever, I think was a sideboard card. And like Freebooter is like a sideboard card as well. I think this is also a sideboard card, but this is a solid sideboard card. This, I think, is going to see play in many, many decks, and it's going to be a solid, like, bordered in game two sort of thing. So for that reason, I think it's great there. In limited, don't, 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 don't bother. Don't, don't do that. Like, unless you have duress effects out the ass, because you already know what you're calling. I mean, I guess you could play game two if you know they have, like, you know too many things if you know they have that one planeswalker and this is your removal for it sure but i wouldn't i just wouldn't unless you really 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 want to see their deck i wouldn't so yeah like one out of five limited if if you have the information sure but otherwise don't bother don't build your deck around this 100 percent, don't do that if you just happen to be in black and you took this because you wanted to because of rare draft then maybe you put it in game two otherwise get a better card don't know where to look on this card this is a very very strange thing i don't izzy izzy are you okay who hurt you izzy who hurt you peer into the abyss for seven mana target player draws cards equal to half their life no no let's try again target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half their life Round up each time. So you lose more life, but you draw slightly more cards if things are odd, whatever. Um, big question is, do you play this on yourself or do you play it on your opponent? Hmm, I don't know. Um, obviously, this is never going to kill. For seven mana, it's really, really expensive as well. I'm just going to put this zero to five both ways. 
I mean, maybe like a one out of five and limited if you want to, because you can just draw more cards and suddenly you're back in the game, even though you lost like four life, because maybe you're at eight, now you're at four and you use your whole turn doing this. So if you are not stable on the board, you're dead. Um, or unless you have like a whole bunch of more mana. And then in that case, sure, maybe you have like 12 lands out there, which is like a lot of lands. Ugh, I don't know. But I'm not really a huge fan of this thing being this expensive and the half and half and whatever. No. Um, so yeah, zero to five constructed, one out of five limited. But this is not something you're going to be super happy to pick up. What does that say? When your eyes bleed and your brain leaks out your ears, then we'll talk about lost sanity. Oh, lovely. Okay. Pestilent Haze, a three mana sorcery. Choose one. All creatures get minus two, minus two, or remove two ulti counters from each planeswalker. This is a lot of fun. Honestly, this is pretty cool. Um, so this is basically Cry of the Carnarium, except you can also kill planeswalkers with it. Instead, you get the option to do one or the other. Um, also, it doesn't exile worth noting, so it's not as good against, like, you know, cats in particular. Anything that wants to come back from the graveyard, it can still come back. Um, but this is cool. I think in limited, this is like a solid card. If you op if you get this in your opening hand, you can certainly play a slower game to begin with and then just play bigger things later on. Maybe you can set it up where your opponent is a 3-3, three, three, you chump block with a little 1-1 one, one dude, and you play this afterwards. Actually, you don't chump block. They block the 1-1 one, one with their 3-3, three, because three, sorcery speed. Keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, in standard, um, I think this could be like a 2 out of 5, maybe? I think it might just replace Cry the Carnarium, depending on how many answers we have for Cat Oven. And in limited, uh, yeah, 3 out of 5. I like it. I think it's actually a solid card. I think the cost for it, or the ability, is definitely in tune there. Again, this is another set where all the Planeswalkers are mythic, so this is not War of the Spark, right? So, therefore, don't really count on the second mode going off too much. Just see this as a 3 mana, minus 2, minus 2. And it's still pretty good. Rise again! Ah, yes. This is, this, I like the artwork. I think it's pretty cool. It's just fairly simple, straightforward. It gets to the point. Like, what are we doing? We are coming up of the coffin. Cool. Five mana sorcery reanimate something. Um, it's all right. I don't really think you'd want to use this with your dude that when it comes back in the graveyard, it gets a 5-5 five, five demon because you're paying five mana. I wouldn't just rather have a five mana 5-5 five, five creature or some other thing, you know? So in standard zero out of five, they're just strictly better reanimator cards. And in limited, um, I give it like a like a two, maybe maybe it should just be a one out of five. I think it's two. I think like you know having this or having a grizzly bear is tough. Which one do you want? Yeah, expensive. This is like your usual cost for rise from the grave, rise again. It's it's nothing really to um, be excited about. Okay, Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Oh, I actually really like that name. I think it's pretty cool. So this is the Black Shrine. Every color has a shrine. Um, they're all legendary, and they all have abilities based on the number of shrines you have. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X where X is the number of shrines you control. The fact that this is only costing two mana means this is playable. If this was like the blue one, it cost four and let you draw cards, I think it is. Yeah, you draw and then you discard anyway. Freaking like looting. Um, it would be nearly unplayable. But for two mana, it's not too bad. A two mana clock on your opponent, um, which is not ill gotten inheritance, is really nice. It's, we've come quite a way. Like you know, ill gotten inheritance four mana for largely the same effect, except for you can pay a little more and sack it and do like a burst of damage at the end there. Whereas this is just two mana, half the cost, and you do basically the same thing. I, I really like this card. In limited, I'm gonna say like three out of five there. This is cool. If you happen to have more shrines. By all means, but the question is how many of the same shrine do you put in your deck? Probably not too many, but whatever. In standard, if the shrine's deck is good, I think this is going to be a solid like thing in there anyway. I largely think shrine's is going to just be like a meme deck for a while. Like, if you tried to make gates in the current format, it's funny. Gates of Blaze is good. The ram is cool. But what are you doing? You're just not playing the right cards. So I think it's going to be largely like, it'll have a decent showing at first, and then it'll be relegated to the side. Not the side board, just the side of all your matches. So yeah, like one out of five in standard. And in limited, it's, 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 it's cool. I think I said like what, two, maybe three out of five. Yeah, three out of five. Okay, Sanguine Indulgence. Four mana. 
Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. It costs three less to cast if you gain three or more life this turn. So it could be a one mana return two things. That being said, I don't like this at all. Um, one out of five in limited, zero out of five in standard. It's not all that great. Odds are you're going to be paying the four life. Not four life. You're going to be paying the four mana to get two cards back from your graveyard. And that's cool later on, you know, if you have some, maybe like 1.5 out of 5. If you have a big guy that died, unfortunately, you know, your opponent happened to have the kill spell. Cool, I'll bring it back. But 4 mana is a lot to pay. And you probably can't play your big guy that you really want to the same turn anyway. So hopefully you're not, you know, hurting too bad. Otherwise, this is not going to be the answer you need. Silver Smote Ghoul. Ah, uh, yes, yes, this is quite, quite the smote indeed. For 3 mana, you got a 3-1. Zombie Vampire. That's, that's nice. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, again with a life gain, return this to your grave from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And you can pay two and sack it to draw a card. That's kind of cool. I mean, if you have the payoffs for it, if you have a lot of life linkers, then you might get this thing incidentally. Um, almost. Don't get this thing confused, confused with Bloodgast. It is by no means Bloodgast. But it's a, it's a nice little card. The unfortunate thing is that it costs three. I think this thing can easily cost two and still be very, very balanced and still not be overpowered at all. But it's cool, I guess. Um, I don't really think... Like, life gain, aside from a handful of cards that, uh, that aren't even standard to say win the game if you have so much life. Um, and then there's the Ajani Planeswalker, where when you his ultimate, although it costs zero, triggers when you have 15 more life than your starting total. Aside from that... I don't think this is really the life gain payoff you really want. So I'm going to put this at standard, like one out of five. Maybe, maybe, maybe life gain is a deck. I'll try it out. We'll see. Who knows? Um, in limited, if you have the life linkers, if you have the revitalizes, or maybe not. If you have the stuff to fuel it, it's cool because at least you can just sack it, draw a card. You can block sack if you want to. Odds are it's going to die anyway. So that's nice. Like two out of five in limited, but standard eh, one. Skeleton Archer. Okay, yeah. Four mana, three, three. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. As far as why this is the black card and why it doesn't have reach, I don't know. Uh, zero to five in constructed is useless and in limited, uh, one out of five. It's not good. Four mana, three, three is bad. It doesn't have reach for whatever reason, which, you know, it's just, it's not really a point against it, but it's just something it's lacking that thematically it should have. Um, and the one damage, maybe you can pick something off, but odds are it's not really going to matter. I mean, at least you can maybe hit your opponent's face, but that's probably the last thing you want to hit. So, yeah, one out of five. All right, Tavern Swindler. Oh, who likes to gamble? Two mana, two, two. You can tap this and pay three life, flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain three life. You gain six life. <laughs> you know, considering how many life gain triggers you have. Sorry, there we go. There we are, okay. Um, in the set, if it said gain three life, it might see some play anyway. Um, if you do not have any sort of life gain payoffs, this card is useless. So I wouldn't bother. I mean, it's a two mana, two, two. Sure, and maybe a win, but also maybe you just bolt yourself. <laughs> that sucks. So um, odds are it is a net zero, you know, because you pay three and you have a 50-50 chance of either, you know, gaining three or not. So it's... Ultimately, you know, mathematically, it's fine. Um, mathematically, it's just a vanilla 2 too, I suppose. Although, you know, you have to consider the life gain payoffs. If you have any of them, this is cool to put in there and maybe just keep it alive and hope to trigger it. But when you kill yourself with this card, I told you so, by the way. Um, in standard, no, there you can actually build your deck around the gaining life, not build it around potentially gaining life, you know? So, I don't know. Uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer. This is kind of cool. I like like the little bits of gold here and there. One mana, one one flash. Cool. Whenever it or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. There are a few more rogues out there, um, so this definitely could trigger some stuff. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, Thieves Guild Enforcer gets plus two, plus one, and has Death Touch. Now we're talking. This is certainly a card. My goodness. Eat more in the graveyard. Now, this is going to be a little tricky, but it already mills two when it comes out. It is not legendary, so you could, of course, you know, put four of these in your deck. Probably not in limited, unless somehow you drew the nuts. Um, you just pulled all these and you're like, well, I guess I know what deck I'm making. But 
in the standard, you can very, very easily have this effect go off. You can probably reliably have your opponent have, you know, anywhere from like two to three cards in their graveyard. There are plenty of decks that just go through your graveyard already to fuel Euro. You're kind of feeding Euro at that point, but then you also happen to have a 3-2 Death Touch with Flash. With for one, that's amazing, right? So in Constructed, I'm going to put this at a 3 out of 5. Reason being, you need the setup, which you probably can't have done at a very aggressive pace, so I think this is more of a mid-range card. And in Limited, this is it's tricky to actually get cards in your opponent's graveyard most of the time, unless you're already so ahead on board. So in Limited, just the fact that it's a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one flash is cool. So I'm going to say like 2.5 out of 5 in that sense, because when you get the upside, it's such a huge advantage that it'll just like... If it said four cards in their graveyard, which would be insane, then, oh my god, yeah, like, four to five. But the fact that it needs eight, ugh, that's a tough one to get. That is more difficult to get there than you might imagine. So, yeah, like, it's almost a quarter of your opponent's deck. Just think about that one. Okay. Village Rights, a one mana instant speed. I just went over an hour. Damn. Okay, well, whatever. Hopefully the content is good. Instant speed as an additional cost to cast this spell, psychic creature, draw two cards. So I saw Jim Davis's review of all these cards. I have been watching Day 9s, but I just got through the white and the blue. I didn't watch the rest yet. So I only have one of their sides on this thing. And Jim says this card is insane. Because it's at instant speed, basically. It's nice. I mean, we already had... What was it? The Costly Plunder, whatever the hell the thing was, where you... I think it costs two to do the same thing basically and the difference between one mana and two mana is significant don't get me wrong there and that did see a little bit of play ah oh, boy i mean sure ideally you just sack a weak little dude and you have a good time in limited i'm gonna make this a two out of five it's good but i don't think it's that good in limited in standard because in limited the value of each creature is just higher in standard, where you can probably get some tokens to spit out, get some nonsense little dudes here and there, it's essentially one mana draw two. You can obviously block sack with it, and then you don't lose any value. How often do you want to do this in black? I could see you playing this in like more of a control aspect, though, and you happen to make a token off of something, maybe the, I don't know, the Helios not intervention, but the uh, Omen of the Sun, I guess makes little dudes you can also just happen to have other things other ways um sheep token who knows in uh, standard i'm going to put it at three out of five i don't think it is super crazy overpowered but i think it will see some play and i think it'll get there i don't think it's gonna be a four of any deck though um i think a top deck could potentially run like one or two of these and i'm still gonna say three out of five we'll see i will happily be wrong about that card if it's stronger if it's weaker then that's fine i don't mind right, anyway uh veto 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 thorn of the dusk rose ah very nice very nice i should have had my little rose out here huh is it pinned up right now on the, the thingy it's over here somewhere whatever i have a rose pin it's cool uh three mana one three legendary vampire cleric whenever you gain life target opponent loses that much life and you can pay five creatures to control, gain life flank until end of turn. So five is a lot, certainly. I could see you playing this like not just with life linkers, but also with like revitalize and other things that happen to gain you life at the same time. This is cool. I like it. I mean, this obviously is legendary, so you can only have one of them. And the five mana thing there is basically what makes it a rare. If it didn't have that other ability, then it would probably just be an uncommon. Ah, oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Sorry. But because of that, it's okay. Um, in limited, I'm gonna put this at like a one out of five. Sure, in the off cans where you get this, you pay the five, all your creatures swing in there, you gain like maybe five or six life and deal that much damage to your opponent, and suddenly you just win because haha, all my stuff basically punches through. That's cool. But otherwise, it's a three mana one three, which is terrible. In standard. I don't really know how often you're going to want to Lightning Helix your opponent, but that's a cool thing if you can get it to work out. Otherwise, this thing dies fairly easily. Therefore, like, 
two out of five in standard, just because I like the idea and I like the whole Dusk Rose thing, and it's it's cool. Um, and maybe it works, but three mana is also a lot to first get your combo thing going, and then you have to untap, and then you play your stuff. Eh. One out of five standard. Two out of five limited. All right, walking corpse, just two mana, two two. The bear, it's two out of five because that's what I've been putting bears at so far. Standard, just gonna see zero play. I don't even think it really matters. This is a zombie. Moving on, which is cauldron because we needed more things to do with the cat, right? One mana artifact. You can pay two and tap this and sack a creature. You gain one life and draw a card. So it's it's not a replacement for witches oven in case you're wondering. It's certainly not that at all. Um, but it's a nice little thing. You could play one of these in your limited deck and just try to, you know, when you're chump blocking, just sacrifice the thing and you get some more value off it. And you actually gain life, which is kind of cool. Instead of just losing it for nothing. In standard, this is like a zero. There's better ways to draw cards. And I think ultimately you'd rather have like Priest of Forgotten Gods, even though you have to sacrifice two things, or just play Welsh Rider and like you're scrying, which isn't drawing a card certainly, but it's just a better body overall. Better card. So in limited, yeah, I could see this as like a, a, a two out of five. You can sacrifice a few things and maybe get your cards going. Um, but if you don't have any big cards at the end, then you're gonna be doing this until you don't have anything to do it with and then you die. Cool. And we're done! We did it! Just over an hour, unfortunately, but it is what it is. We are where we are, and more of those generic statements. You can say at any time. So it's come to this. See? Here you go. Adds tension, though. It's cool. It's really, really nice. So, uh, here we go. Let's take a look at Liliana again, because she's just lovely, isn't she? Look at that. Look at all the all the designs, all the scarring and whatnot, and then the... Whoa! I don't know. Anywho, that's all the black cards. So I guess I'm excited for the uh, the thing. I don't know. <laughs> Liliana, that's what I'm excited for. Duh, I just gave the thing like a crazy big 5 out of 5 everywhere, so I'm going to try to make that card work. We'll see. Hopefully you tune in and watch me. Hopefully you watch me either great success or massive failure, because the middle road is not very entertaining. doesn't make for good content, just saying. Without further ado, though, feel free to check out my other reviews. I already have the blue and the white one up there, and the red and green, and, and the rest, you know, should be coming up shortly. So, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, good night or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. But as always, good luck.